Interest rates are on the up. So what does this mean for savings accounts? Are they now a viable option to grow some of your wealth? Let's take a look. I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Well, welcome back to my channel. Gosh, I know it has been a while and this is probably the longest unplanned break that I've done. Uh, and this is due to an accumulation of things. I went on holiday. I also became very ill. I'm going through a promotion process at work, which also took up a lot of my time. And, you know, we are approaching the holidays. So my weekends and weeknights have become less and less free. But yes, I am back and ready to make regular content for you. So let's just jump straight back into the topic. So unless you have been living under a rock, you would have noticed that the Bank of England base rate have increased significantly this year here in the UK. Looking at the latest rate, which currently stands at 3%, this means we've seen an increase of 1,100% in less than 12 months. The rate in December last year was at 0.25%. The UK's latest rate sees us itching ever closer to the rate levels that are pre the 2008 financial crash, which really was the catalyst that started off this era of extremely low interest rates. First off, let's make one thing clear and let's make a distinction between the Bank of England base rate and the interest rates on the products you see on savings accounts and mortgages, loans, etc, etc, because these are not the same. If the base rate has gone up to 3%, this does not mean the interest rate on your savings account will now equal 3%. The rate you get from your lender is purely decided by them. So instead, what the base rate does, which is also known as the bank rate, it decides the rate at which banks and lenders can lend between each other, which means that although banks and lenders are free to decide to set whatever interest rates they want, they usually use the base rate as a guide to make this decision. The base rate is set by the Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee, who meet eight times a year and decide on the appropriate monetary action to ensure it meets the government's target of 2% inflation and keep inflation stable. And because the base rate effectively acts like a guide, whenever there is a change in the base rate, there is usually an eventual knock-on effect on the interest rate set on mortgages and savings accounts. So I have trawled through the market and these were the best deals that I could find. But do let me know in the comment section down below if you find anything good too, perhaps I've missed something. Uh, I'll also split these into different types of savings accounts. We'll be looking at easy access savings accounts, regular savings accounts, fixed rates, and current accounts too. Each account have their own characteristics, which may suit some situations over others. So we'll go through them one by one and you can decide which is the best for you. So starting with the easy access savings account, which usually have the least amount of restrictions attributed to them, and therefore they tend to offer the least amount of interest rates. So the winner to this goes to the Coventry Building Society, and I'm listing two of their accounts here, with the first one being a little bit cheeky. It's called the Limited Access Saver Online account, and this does have some restrictions, but they're not super restrictive, so I have put it in this category. The account offers a 2.85% variable rate, which means if you do put in £1,000 into that account over the course of 12 months without withdrawing, your ending balance would be £1,028.50. However, I did say there was some restrictions on this, and that is you can only take out your money six times per year. Taking it out any more than that will incur a penalty fee. Otherwise, we do have another account which offers no restrictions whatsoever, and that still sits with the Coventry Building Society. They have an easy access online account, which currently offers a 2.35% variable rate, with the interest being paid annually and monthly. Using the same £1,000 example I used before, that would leave you with an ending balance of £1,023.50. So these rates are nothing to scream home about, but they are a somewhat of an improvement, considering if I compare it to my current easy access account that I've just been given by default and I don't actually use it, um, it's with Santander and as an everyday saver, it offers me 0.3%. So it's definitely worth shopping around as you may find better rates than what your current provider is offering. Moving on to regular savings accounts, and this is something that I used to have in the past, so I am actually particularly interested to see what this currently has to offer. These are accounts that tend to pay the highest rates, however, you are restricted to how much money you can put in them and when it comes to withdrawing as well. Now, the best one that I could find goes to First Direct, which is the winner in this category, having recently upped their savers rate on the 1st of December with a lovely annual equivalent rate of 7%, which is fixed for 12 months. So there are some limits to this account. So you have to deposit at least 
£25 per month, but no more than £300 per month. The interest is only paid once the 12 months have elapsed, and you're not allowed to withdraw your money during that 12 month period. If you do decide to withdraw money in the meantime, the good news is that there is no penalty fee. But what will happen instead is that your account will automatically close and the bank will pay you the variable rate instead for the period you had it open. According to their guidance, by maxing out your £300 contribution, which is the equivalent of depositing £3,600 over the course of a year, you'll receive about £136.50 gross interest. Not bad. Another regular savings account which is worth mentioning is the Barclays Rainy Day Saver account, which is for Blue Reward members only. Now, although this has a lower rate of interest at 5.12%, the maximum deposit can be up to £5,000, which is significantly larger than the first direct option, which means you can receive approximately £250 of gross interest in the course of one year. Now, regular savings accounts are good for a number of reasons. One, it can help you get started if you're new to saving. The regular payments are quite low, so it's quite easy to make those payments. And it's also good for putting money away that is neither long term nor immediate and still earn some decent interest than keeping it in a regular savings account instead. And although you do lose the benefits of the higher rate if you do decide to withdraw your money early, the best thing is, is that there's typically no penalty fee if you decide to do so. So there is that added flexibility if you have to access that money when you absolutely need to. There is also no penalty for hitting that subscribe. Moving on to fixed rate savings accounts. Now, these accounts essentially see your money locked away for a term period, usually between one to three years, and the interest rate is fixed for that said term. Now, my vote would go to Nationwide as the winner for this one. They currently offer a one, two, and three year deal offering 4%, 4.5, and 4.75 respectively. I'll put up the amount of interest you can expect on each of these on your screen now. Now, although Nationwide aren't offering the highest rates on these types of savings accounts, but what they do do is offer the best, highest rate and lowest entry combination. For example, with these savings accounts, you can get started from as little as one pound all the way up to five million. Other higher rate options tend to have a minimum deposit of 1,000 to 10,000 pounds. Now, these types of savings accounts are great for those that want to accumulate some wealth, but perhaps are risk averse in their risk attitude. Although on average, this will rarely outperform the market if you decide to invest that money instead in stocks and funds. But you know, there are going to be some people where a venture like that just doesn't work for them. Perhaps it makes them feel uncomfortable. So an option like this may be more viable. Under normal circumstances, this should be beating the inflation rate, which normally sits around the 2% mark. And most likely the lender will be covered by the financial services compensation scheme. So you know at least £85,000 of your wealth is guaranteed to be protected if anything bad was to happen to your provider. And lastly, moving on to current accounts. Now I know they technically aren't classed as a savings account, but they too offer interest rates as well. So it's worth taking a closer look at them. Again, the winner goes to Nationwide as they're offering 5% interest on your current account of up to £1,500. That means that you can expect to receive a maximum of £75 per year in your bank account. There are some terms you have to agree with, such as depositing £1,000 into the account each month and that it only lasts for one year. Post the 12 months, the rates will go down to 0.25%. Cool, so those are the best savings accounts available in the UK as of today. I'll definitely be looking closely at First Direct as a potential contender to open up the regular savings account again, but let me know what you've decided to do in the comment section down below. It'll be great to hear from you. And yeah, as always, if you found this video useful, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Bye.